Okay, so uh, so this talk is of course about cellular human homology. Some of you might have seen the definition in some of the talks before. Uh, I did give a talk in the algebraic group seminar on uh, Monday, uh, but this is not dependent on that, but it's kind of complementary. Uh, so the talk is of course based on joint work with uh, Papi and Morel. And uh, so today what I'm going to do is that so of course, uh, the motivation for this kind of thing comes from the uh, the problem of computing uh, the universal central extension of a split reductive group in the sense of a sheaf, and uh, so there is so the motivation for this was the uh, so I'll just write this in very very short. So the motivation for considering this problem is the motivic version of Matsumoto's theorem. And uh, so I will not give all the details here because I already spoke about uh, this in the, I mean, I already talked about the historical aspect and what the explicit statements are, so on and so forth in the other uh, seminar. Uh, and I think most of you were there. Uh, and so today I will basically be talking about uh, how to compute this uh, universal central extension as a sheaf. And uh, this appears as a certain homology group, and this is what we need to compute. And uh, I want to so begin by explaining the general theory of cellular A1 homology. This is for schemes associated with a nice cellular structure. Uh, and in fact, of course, making the definition is abstract and quite easy. What is difficult is doing computations with them. So I will actually try to show, give some insight about the computation for uh, an algebraic group of interest about how uh, uh, things happen. So basically the motivation, it's about, uh, of course it was, so this motivic version of Matsumoto's theorem, it's about computing what is called the A1 fundamental group of G, where G is a split reductive group. And uh, this happens to be also the first A1 homology group of G which in general is uncomputable, but, uh, and which is why this cellular machinery is, uh, we were led to considering this cellular machinery in order to be able to compute it. Okay. Yeah, just, just to check by yes. H, H1, A1, you mean the non-effective one, right? Uh, H1, A1, by that I mean? Yeah, I mean that this is a homology in the, a one derived category, but yes, yes, yes. So I will uh, very quickly give a definition. I mean, not really a okay. definition, but I will just set up the notation. Okay, so yeah, uh, throughout, of course, I mean you can get results about non-perfect fields, but uh, because split reductive groups are defined uh, over Z, but uh, I will always assume throughout this talk that K is a perfect field, no restriction on characteristic. And uh, I will denote by app K the abelian category of Nisnevich sheaves of abelian group. And by the way, so for any sorts of questions, just please feel free, feel free to just unmute yourself and ask me, interrupt me at any time. On the smooth schemes on K. And uh, by app A1K, I mean the abelian category of strictly A1 invariant sheaves. And uh, this just uh, this just means that this Nisnevich cohomology pre-sheaves with coefficients in M, these are all uh, A1 invariant. on smooth schemes for all n greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so uh, basically these homotopy sheaves, A1 homotopy sheaves for uh, n greater than or equal to one. So for any, you can define them for any space, any pointed space, so I, I'll just, I, I will be dropping base points and so on always henceforth but anyway this, this is there so this is defined to be so you first take the pre-sheaf so you start with a smooth scheme u and to associate 
uh, you associate the A1 homotopy classes of maps from the nth suspension of U plus. U plus is just an uh, U plus just means that the disjoint union of U and a, a point spec K, and then you take its suspension with S n, and then you take pointed maps into X, and you take A1 homotopy classes of pointed maps. And uh, so this is just a pre-sheaf. You have to sheafify it for the Nisnevich topology, and uh, then you get uh, pi n A1, the nth uh, A1 fundamental. And then it's a result of Morel that this is a strictly even invariant sheaf for all n greater than or equal to 1. So note that n equal to 0 is excluded because it doesn't have a group structure. And uh, so, in fact, um, yeah, so it, since it doesn't have any structure, we don't have much to work with. And it's hard to deal with in general. So there is also a... a a related homology version and uh, this is just uh, so this is the definition of HNA1 and uh, this is just the nth homology of something so here this is just the so called normalized chain complex On a space, so basically X can be any simply shell space. So in each degree is something, and then you can take free sheaf on each level, and then you take alternate sum of uh, face maps, and then you get this one, and then you normalize it, and you get this one. But the whole prop, I mean, of course, our script X is just going to be a G or a scheme. So basically, this is not going to be problematic. What is problematic is this guy. Because uh, this A1 localization functor, it's completely non-explicit. And uh, we don't know what it does. So it, in general, it is defined on the derived category of ab k. And uh, so this basically, uh, I mean, starts over here and goes inside uh, the so-called A1 derived category, which is the subcategory of A1 local objects. So even local objects are in some sense uh, discrete or vibrant to be, vibrant is a better word actually uh, in this, but the whole point is that the definition, both the definitions are completely non-obvious and basically don't give us any uh, idea how to compute them. And uh, so basically the only computation that is known and which I will use from time to time is uh, due to Morel and uh, it says that, so if you have a pointed space, of course, you can split out Z from it and you get the reduced sheaf and the reduced uh, zeroth A1 homology sheaf is of uh, GM smash N times is K Milner weight in degree N. So this is the only computation that is known and all others are kind of derivatives of this. So, I mean, uh, to, I mean, of course, this leads to some basic example. So just to give you a very quick example, uh, if you are, uh, uh, for instance, if you are trying to compute H1, A1 of SL2, then SL2 happens to be A1 homotopic to the first column, which is uh, A2 minus 0. And uh, it's a simple motivic exercise uh, to check that this is actually even equivalent to the suspension of GM smash GM. And uh, now one can get this to, this is just the reduced A1 homology of GM which twice. And this is K2 Milner. So this is one way of computing the fundamental group of SL2, which is how it is done in uh, Fabian Morel's book on A1 algebraic topology over a field. And uh, so the idea is, of course, I mean, we can always get started, but uh, the idea is to kind of make a more canonical computation, I mean, which uh, a proof that would generalize for all groups. We want to find a proof for SL2 that generalizes for all groups. But anyway, I will be giving, giving kind of outlining the proof for all groups. 
okay uh, so henceforth now after this i will uh, so of course uh, let me just make one small, small remark that of course we are interested in split reductive groups but we can always reduce to uh, split semi simple say, almost simple simply connected groups as far as computing fundamental groups or homology uh, groups are concerned uh, i will just leave it at that and hence uh, i'm going to start defining the the cellular a1 homology so so let me just ask if there are any questions up to this point so just uh, please let me know yeah i have some kind of question yeah yeah please uh, i mean this uh, hn uh, can be described as some home in the a1 derived category right i mean uh, as usual the, the zeros homology okay let's let's look at the zeros homology the zeros homology is some form in the derived category right no no i didn't understand the zero homology Mm -hmm. I actually didn't understand the question. Yeah, because I haven't made it precise yet. Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. I will ask it later, I think. Sorry. No, no, you can ask. I, I, I mean, I, I actually, I did not hear the question because of the, some, there was some disturbance. Ah, okay, so my question is something like, I want to say that uh, this uh, one homology is some kind of uh, non-effective one. By this, I mean that it is from the uh, A1 localization of the derived category, and you do not convert GM there, right? Yeah, it but, is non orientable, but uh, actually, there is some part of your sentence which I'm not able to hear, actually. I, I say that this, I mean, you have the uh, a1 uh, the non-effective version of the a1 derived category and then you can further invert uh, gm right ah yeah, yeah so you mean effective so there is no effective unstably there is no effective version is that the yes but uh, yeah, yeah but i mean this the definition of homology is uh, s1 stable right uh, but not gm stable no 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 this is unstable this is not gm stable yeah, I mean, you can probably also define some jam stable version. Uh, and uh, uh, no, I don't know how. I mean, uh, of course, uh, uh, I, I mean, I don't know how to do it unstably. So, yeah. uh, you mean you want to look at uh, something like, I mean, X, then X smash GM, then X smash GM smash GM and so on? Yeah, probably. And uh, see if it stabilizes? Yes. Because that yes. thing I, I don't think will work, right? Because of the, because you will get more and more higher and higher Milner with uh, K theories. Yeah, but you need to, yeah, okay. I will think about it. It might be a few later. We can discuss afterwards. Yeah. So yeah. After the, yeah. yeah sorry. Talk. No, no, no problem. So, okay. So now I'll go on to define cellular A1 homology. And uh, so, so of course, I mean, the idea is to, uh, I mean, of course, when you cannot compute a group, you want to stratify it. You want to, if there is a nice stratification, you want to stratify it and then you want to uh, uh, by open sub schemes say and then you want to understand what are the closed strata if they are simple you hope to compute it uh, nicely and uh, so of course usually the word cellular is used uh, when the cells the strata or the cells are affine spaces here i will uh, uh, i mean assume slightly more general things uh, so for instance i want to also allow things like gm and tori and products of tori and affine spaces because that's what happens for bruha decomposition of an algebraic group and uh, so these building blocks, the so-called cells, are going to be cohomologically trivial varieties. So let me just give a definition. Okay, so I'll put it in blue. So a smooth scheme is cohomologically trivial.
if uh, its Nisnevich cohomology is trivial for all uh, n greater than or equal to 1 and for all uh, strictly even invariant m. Okay, so uh, I mean, obviously, the examples uh, there are many examples. Uh, I mean, anyway, uh, well, I mean, for instance, even contractible varieties will be examples, but uh, there are not so many. I mean, though there are very few exotic ones, and uh, but but really speaking, I mean, I, all I want other than affine spaces is the GM and product of them, so basically, split tori. So, of course, it's a standard computation that, uh, uh, I mean, GM is cohomologically trivial. You can just put it in a, uh, in a localization sequence, put GM inside A1 and a point, and then write down localization sequence for uh, this cohomology of, uh, with coefficients in strictly even invariant sheaves, and then you will get that uh, GM is cohomologically trivial. And then so is the case for all uh, split tori. So now the advantage of working with uh, these is uh, the following. So simple observation that uh, if if you take a smooth scheme which is affine and cohomologically trivial, then every vector bundle on X is trivial. Okay, so I'll quickly indicate a two-line proof. It's quite easy. So, although, I mean, uh, it might look a bit fancy. So, basically, uh, the reason, uh, I mean, the affineness is important because in that case, uh, rank R vector bundles on X actually correspond to A1 homotopy classes of maps from X into BGLR. So if you start with a rank R vector bundle on X, then this would correspond to a homotopy class of maps from X to BGLR. And here it is important that X is smooth and it is also important that X is affine. If X is not affine, this is not true. And now, uh, to check that xi is trivial, you, it's a standard Kosmikov tower argument. So basically, it uh, suffices to just check that xi lifts to, so it's a map from X to BGL R. You have to just check that it lifts to BGL R minus 1, because then it means that it has uh, a, rank, uh, a rank 1 trivial summand. And then you can just iterate this argument to show that it is trivial. And uh, this is actually uh, quite easy in the sense that, uh, so this just says that obstructions to, to lifting xi to a rank r minus 1 bundle, this actually, uh, so obstructions lie in groups of the following form. So this star can be anything, not, uh, uh, so it, basically these are some fundamental groups, A1 fundamental groups of the fiber of uh, BGLR minus one to BGLR, which is actually GLR modulo GLR minus one, but it doesn't matter what that is. And then there will be some line bundle twist. So there are groups of this form. So this star and dot can be whatever, but obstructions will always live inside groups of this form. And uh, so this is some line bundle twist, but line bundles are going to be trivial. And uh, so this is also strictly a one invariant. So why is the line bundle uh, trivial? So basically X is cohomologically trivial. And uh, this just means that uh, this H1 X GM is trivial. And uh, it also means that uh, for any, I mean, because uh, coefficients in any strictly even invariant sheaf is trivial. So all these groups are trivial. Okay. So, and uh, that's why we are done.
so basically there is never any obstruction to lift m and uh, so you can uh, yeah so every every vector bundle is trivial what is going to be important in our thing is not just triviality of a vector bundle but choice of an orientation and uh, so uh, let me give a definition of orientability that i will use there are actually several different definitions so i want to make sure that i use the right one i mean what is sufficient for this purpose is so uh, a rank r vector bundle oops xi on x which is assumed to be smooth is uh, so actually in our paper we are calling it strictly orientable but uh, for today's talk i will just use or i will just keep on saying orientable if uh, if you take it rth exterior power then this is tri uh, a trivial line bundle okay and then a strict orientation of uh, so of course i'll just keep on saying orientation so strict orientation of xi this is basically a choice of an isomorphism between so the trivial bundle on x and uh, this top exterior power okay so of course i'm using some abuse of notation here i'm writing this scheme a1x but uh, yeah that's associated with the trivial bundle so uh, yeah so this is the so there are different versions of orientability some people just assume that uh, the top exterior power is the is is the square of a line bundle and so on and so on, so forth uh, but anyway this is this one is sufficient for us in some sense this is the sl orientability so uh, so there is a following key lemma which actually uh, i mean is important but i'm not going to give a proof of it uh, for the reasons of time it is not very hard to prove so the lemma is that uh, so here's uh, where uh, yeah so i will talk about this uh, here's where this morel wolbowski purity theorem comes into picture so let uh, x be cohomologically trivial and let xi be so basically uh, i mean i'm going to take xi to be a vector bundle but it's going to be trivial because of the above lemma so it's a trivial rank r vector bundle on x and uh, now you can uh, so now you can consider this thom space of xi this is which is basically just xi you take the quotient of xi by the complement of the zero section and uh, this admits a map uh, so this is the part of this morel wolbowski purity theorem homotopic homotopy purity theorem to this quotient of r dimensional affine space by the punctured affine space smash with uh, x plus okay so the statement says that so there is there is actually a, a map in the homotopy category like this and uh, so the induced pointed a1 homotopy class of this map which is actually known to be an a1 weak equivalence by the purity theorem why do you need purity here uh yes i mean why do you need purity here you you took that trivia so vector bundles so oh sorry sorry i mean no, these spaces are the same yeah. i have assumed to be the trivial bundle <laughs> you don't need purity uh yeah i mean uh, this is more or less equality which depends yeah, yeah, on yeah, the this is, this is clear clear sorry sorry purity is required only for uh yeah non uh, i mean purity is required for i mean yeah some space of the normal bundle i'm, I'm crazy 
you don't require QVT, as Alexei pointed out. Uh, so this is actually just a thumb space of the trivial bundle, which is uh, has this form. And uh, yeah, so this uh, so the content of the lemma is that this uh, only depends. on the chosen strict orientation of uh, chosen, uh, so I'll just call orientation, orientation of that. So once you choose an orientation, this uh, class is completely determined by that. And uh, basically, I mean this, uh, I mean, okay, so I don't know, so I mean trivial bundle, it's going to be basically isomorphic to AR over X. And uh, basically, the point is that any automorphism of AR over X is in some sense form X to GLR. I don't know if this is followable. So I'm, I'm just going to make a, I'm kind of making a vague comment about how this is kind of about. So this uh, is somehow related to an element of GLR of OX, so to speak. And uh, then basically you use uh, cohomological triviality to kind of uh, say that, uh, I mean, the corresponding class is kind of, I mean, is A1 trivial. That's the idea of the argument. I'm not going to go into the details. It's kind of formal. You can, uh, yeah, take a look at it. So, so, but this is actually, uh, yeah, important in the sense that, uh, I mean, the strict orientations basically fix all the identifications uh, for that purpose. Okay, so now let me come back to come to the definition of cellular A1 homology. Uh, did, I, did I define? Okay, I defined cohomology correctly. Yeah. Okay, so a smooth scheme. It's called cellular if it admits an increasing filtration by uh, open subschemes. So let's start with the empty set. So where uh, for each I, uh, if you take this closed stratum, uh, omega I minus omega I minus one inside omega I. So let me call this uh, immersion J I. So is of co-dimension I and every irreducible component of omega i minus omega i minus 1 is uh, smooth, affine, and cohomologically trivial. Okay, so this is basically the definition that kind of suits us. And uh, okay. So now, uh, so here's where I actually wanted to use homotopy purity. So basically, motivic homotopy purity implies that uh, if you look at the quotient of this omega i by omega i minus one, this is. Uh, I mean, A1 weak equivalent to the home space of the normal bundle of this closed immersion GI. So, new I, this is the, the normal bundle of GI. Okay, and then there is this standard procedure of getting a cellular A1 chain complex. So, the cellular, yeah. So this is a standard topological procedure. So the cellular A1 chain complex of X 
is uh, defined to be as follows. So, so its ith term is the ith A1 homology of this quotient. And so the I minus one term is the quotient at the next level. And uh, so there is a standard way of defining this differential. And uh, so this differential is defined as the composite like this. So basically, uh, this map is the connecting map in the cofibration sequence for the inclusion of omega i minus 1 inside omega i. And uh, this one is the standard, this one is the usual quotient map induced by the quotient map uh, for, from omega i minus 1 to omega i minus 1 modulo omega i minus 2. And then once you make such a definition, it is kind of clear that this is a complex if you, because when you use this kind of a next roof over here, then this plus this is going to be zero. So that's why, uh, I mean, this is a complex. And uh, and then the cellular even homology of X is uh, defined to be the homology of this complex. Okay, so after this, I'm going to kind of go on to determine the terms of this complex and so on, and then go to the algebraic group. But any questions up to now? So it's a bit of a long definition. Okay, so uh, yeah. excuse me. Does uh, the cellular A1 homology depend on the choice of your um, filtration? So it depends upon the filtration. It depends upon the filtration, but I mean, the complex depends, uh, but uh, up to homotopy, it is actually independent. In uh -huh. fact, uh, this cellular A1 homology, I mean, in the, uh, so this uh, object actually lies, you can see this as an object of derived category of strictly A1 invariant shields. Uh, that's because uh, each of these HI A1s are strictly A1 invariant. And uh, as an object there, it is actually uh, functorial and it's actually uniquely determined. And of course, there is a, I mean, I should just point out one thing. So I was going to point out later, but I will do it now. Uh, so it happens that each of these are projective objects. And that is because they have uh, something to do with this Milner K theory and Milner with K theory, direct sums of Milner with K theory. And that is actually what goes into this intrinsic. So you can actually give an intrinsic definition of this uh, cellular uh, chain complex. So actually, I mean, at the end, right now it is dependent on this stratification, but it is going to be independent of the stratification up to homotopy in the derived category of strictly level invariant sheets. Okay, so uh, yeah, so now I let me just make some remarks. So up to now, of course, I mean, uh, I, I was not going to talk about this, but of course, it, it a priori depends only upon the only upon the stratification, but it doesn't because of something that I will not uh, explain. But uh, I mean, as of now, it is completely useless because you cannot make a single computation using this. So when you want to make computations, you have to make some choices. So uh, let me just make some observations, uh, very quick observations. So basically, this is the kind of easy observation that uh, this vanishes for n less than zero and n uh, greater than dimension of x. That is because the strata each uh, at each stage are, uh, I mean, are co-dimension one. But note that the end point, so x was supposed to be omega of n over here. But this L need not have anything to do with the dimension. I mean, this could be already of high dimension. And then, uh, I mean, anyway, it's an open filtration. So, I mean, stratification by open set. So basically, L, uh, basically, I mean, it's not a good way to write this. But I, I just say that L has nothing to do with. Dimension of X. It's just about the stratification. I mean, in our 
Bruha decomposition, the L is going to be the length of the longest element of the Y loop of G. So, uh, okay. So, secondly, it's just a Hurevich style argument. So, okay, just uh, the Hurevich style argument actually implies that if X is A1, N minus 1 connected, so this kind of follows from this intrinsic description, which I have not given, but uh, the, uh, then it follows that the zero cellular homology is Z. Then it follows that the ith cellular homology is zero for i between zero, uh, one and n minus one. And then there is a canonical map from the nth homology, A1 homology to the nth cellular homology, that's an isomorphism. And at the next level, it is surjective. It's an epimorphism of this David Shields. Okay, and then the third most important remark is that uh, after choosing a trivialization or an orientation of uh, new i, you can actually identify these. So this hi's of omega i modulo omega i minus one. So this is the hi of home space of new y and uh, yeah so this home space of new i so this new i is the trivial bundle so this is going to be so of course you can also write this as si smash gm i times smash uh, omega i minus omega i minus one plus and then this will be the zeroth reduced homology of gm smash i times tensor with uh, the zeroth non-reduced homology because there is this plus over here. Uh, so that's why the, it would be non-reduced. So non-reduced homology of omega i minus omega i times. And uh, this, as I had written in the beginning it, by this result of model, this is ki min omega. So this is what we will uh, use. Okay, so now I'm going to move to uh, the case of the algebraic group. So let me ask if there are any questions up to this point about the definition and basic computations, please. So I'm know. interested, uh, what happens uh, if uh, omega i minus one has uh, multiple uh, irreducible components and they intersect what do you mean by uh, no? What happens if bundle? omega i minus one is? Uh, sorry, I did not. Omega i minus one has multiple irreducible components, and they intersect. So, for example, uh, no, uh, no, no, no. Everything lines. here is smooth. So, irreducible components are connected components. Okay, so uh, we can we cannot take as omega i two lines uh, in a fine plane. No, such a thing will not happen because I'm assuming that omega i minus omega i minus. I, actually, I did not write it properly. Uh, about uh, now, I realize. Actually, uh, no, no, no. So actually, I should have. I mean, I wrote that every irreducible component is smooth. I should have actually written that this is. This is actually a regular. I mean, this is a smooth. Uh, this is a. This is. I mean, omega i minus omega i minus one is actually smooth. Yeah, but so my minus omega i minus one. So I can. Can I take, for example, plane two lines and the point of their intersection? Uh, no, but if you have a smooth, uh, if this omega i minus omega i minus one, if this guy is smooth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, to two lines minus the point of their intersection, it's smooth. Yes. That is true, but uh, I mean, it will not be an open subset of. Uh, I mean, your x is that, but our my x is also smooth. Yes, so X is a fine uh, two-dimensional affine space. 
x is two dimensional but then this two lines intersecting in a point is not smooth so you have to take an open subset so you are remo removing the complement ah, open. Of, oh, okay complement okay yeah, of these two lines intersecting at a point okay okay i understand yeah thank you uh, but uh, yeah, yeah so uh, yeah yeah so this is this is basically yeah it's uh, it's kind of i mean it's a very special situation here okay so henceforth uh, i will completely focus on algebraic groups and uh, so the case of split reductive group actually reduces to split, uh, split semi simple almost simple algebraic groups even simply connected uh, okay so henceforth now g will always be a split i just write it once So basically, first of all, computation for split reductive, uh, I mean, reduces to computation for its derived part, semi-simple, because then it fits into uh, an exact sequence with uh, the complement being kind of the co-radical torus, which is kind of A1 discrete. Then that uh, reduces to the semi-simple part. And uh, then you can reduce to simply connected part, because then the a1 fundamental group will just be an extension by the algebraic fundamental group, which is a finite group. And then simply connected for the simply connected group, you can reduce to almost simple because then it's just a product of its almost simple factors. And uh, K, as I said, is uh, perfect. So now fix a pinning of G as uh, in Burbaki. So this just means the following. So this means you fix a maximal K split torus. By the way, so just to, I mean, since this question was asked, so uh, I mean, a good way to keep uh, track of these examples is just look at the projective space and go on removing projective spaces of lower dimension. So that's the prototype that I have in mind because it appears as G mod B, G mod B, and uh, so on. So, so this uh, fixes a maximal case split torus and a Borel uh, subgroup G, uh, Borel subgroup B of G containing T. And these two determines the root system. Uh, so, in particular, it determines uh, this set delta, which is the basis of the root system consisting of uh, simple roots. And uh, of course, so, so the pinning consists of three things. One is this uh, K split torus, a borel, and the third one is an isomorphism. every root group into with GA. So this U alpha is going to be an isomorphism from GA into this root group U alpha for all alpha in this, for every simple root alpha. Okay, uh, so now if you take the normalizer of the torus inside uh, G and then uh, take quotient, this is the wild group. And uh, so, given this data, there is a way to uh, get, uh, so of course, uh, so now we all know that this wild group of G is generated by this uh, simple reflections corresponding to this simple roots. And uh, so it's a coxeter group. So this is, I, I'll just write it, generated by simple reflections. And uh, so the notation is going to be S alpha. And uh, <laughs> okay, so there is a kind of canonical way of lifting these S alphas to the uh, normalizer of the torus. And uh, that uh, convention I will use. So this is standard from Burbaki. So, um, So basically for all units, 
So this lift of S alpha to normalizer of torus uh, is, uh, I mean, basically for every unit in K, you have a lift. And that lift has this very specific formula. You take U alpha of X times U minus alpha of X inverse times U alpha of X. So the product is in G. And uh, this actually belongs to normalizer of the torus, of course, K value points and so on, but uh, this thing. But for all this, this lifts S alpha. Okay, so that's the, that's proved in Bupaki. And then one has to set, uh, so we assume that S alpha dot, so it's this particular lift, this is uh, W alpha of minus one. For all alpha and delta. So this is kind of important because if you make a different choice, you won't get uh, uh, you all get, you all get this. So I think there's a question: uh, if factor, if this construction factor through S1 stable category. So do you mean the construction of the cellular homology? Yes. Uh, so. Okay, I the result, so. the result, uh, the fa the functor. So which will be functor. So does it functor through this category? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I see. The functor uh, from. Uh, uh, I guess so. Basically, uh, the cellular even homology can be. Uh, so this I'm not sure, but perhaps it does. Okay. Do the. So I of capitation still won't try meet this po meet this point. Uh huh. I have computation says one stable. So if you fix the filtration, are the computation says one stable? I'm not sure actually. I'm not sure if this is uh, this is going to factor to S1 stable. I just need to check. If you fix the filtration, filtration. What? If you fix the the cellular filtration, so I have computation stay inside this one stable category or not? Can you compute? If you have. Yeah, a, I mean, I, I'll just go to the definition. So. Here was the definition. So the purity is there. I mean, probably, I mean, uh, one has to find the correct analog of this thing, right? So with, uh, uh, I mean, you can probably take the step. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Perhaps it does. Actually, uh, let me just check one thing very quickly. So basically, if you have a kind of, uh, so I think uh, in our paper, in the very last section, actually, we gave uh, conditions when you can uh, find the uh, kind of reasonable uh, realization factors. So it actually requires very little. So if you, from the unstable A1 homotopy category, uh, if you can find a functor into a symmetric tensor functor into another category, such that uh, A1 goes to the zero object and there is mayor vitoris, then you can kind of carry forward all these methods. So yeah, I think it should be possible, but uh, I, I hope I'm I, I mean I'm not, I'm not checked. Okay, note of thematic. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very so, much. Uh, yeah. So now, uh, yeah. So I set this uh, lift, and uh, okay. So now uh, I will also denote uh, by so of course this uh, this Y group is a Coxeter group, so every element can be written as a reduced expression of uh, all these simple reflections and uh, there is a well-defined length function and it has a maximal element so let uh, w0 be the the longest element of uh, w and let l be the length of W0. And now this Bruja decomposition, which gives the Bruja cellular structure. So I just call it Bruja cellular structure. Uh, 
on G. So this uh, so this is this omega zero is the so-called uh, pixel, and uh, so this is basically B W zero B for a suitable for a lift of W zero to the normalizer of the torus. But here also we have to be a little careful, and uh, because we are going to deal with trivializations of the normal bundles of the strata. And hence, there is some complication uh, here. So uh, basically, in order to be able to write uh, these trivializations, one needs to actually choose a reduced expression. So basically, for every, uh, so I will precisely write down how it is done. So for every w, choose a reduced expression. And uh, in our paper, we call this normal reduced expressions. Uh, and set uh, this. So this u sub w, define it to be the product of u alphas, where alpha varies over uh, phi of w, where by phi of w, I mean uh, this set of positive roots, so this is all positive roots, which are taken into negative roots by W. So this is standard uh, algebraic group theory. And now once you do this, of course you need the expression for W to, to be able to write this. And uh, once you do this, you can take this U W inverse cross w dot of t cross u. Now uh, this w dot, so you are writing w as a product of reflections and then you are choosing their lifts s alpha dot given by our convention and then you take the product. That is the definition of w dot. And then this is an isomorphism. The product gives an isomorphism on p w dot t. Okay, so and uh, this in addition is I mean, this is basically the product of uh, a torus and some affine space. And so this is cohomologically trivial. And uh, basically in this, uh, our Kruha decomposition, so this omega i minus omega i minus one, this is just the disjoint union of the Kruha cells where uh, W uh, varies over words of length L minus I. Okay, so uh, yeah. Okay, so now, uh, I mean, of course we want to, uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, so the, so, uh, Okay, so if I write down this, uh, so this C star cell G, if this is the cellular uh, even chain complex, then uh, basically its ith term is going to be uh, this direct sum over this uh, words of length L minus I and uh, corresponding to this, uh, since this is going to be of co-dimension I, so corresponding to the thrown space, there will be a Ki Milner width factor and uh, there will be an H0 A1 of P W B in picture. Now I want to point out something. Uh, of course, some, um, uh, I mean, some identification has gone in into when you actually kind of change thumb space into this. So there is a small technicality which I will just write down uh, because I want to kind of, I mean, we made a choice of a reduced expression for every word, but this is actually not enough. We have to actually make two reduced choices of two reduced expressions. And one is normal, the other one we call horizontal, and I'll just explain where that is, I'm not going to go into too much of detail. 
but uh, I mean, it's a tricky point. So I, I think that should explain. So the point is that, uh, so the point is that, uh, so for every, uh, okay, I'll just, uh, okay, so I, I'll put it in. So for every, uh, this uh, W, if you take this UW, and if you multiply with U of W zero W, this is isomorphic to U. This is a unipotent radical of the, uh, so B is T U, so that is the U is from that, from U is that U. So basically said uh, B to be this W zero W, and uh, then, so basically you need a nice tubular neighborhood of uh, this Bruha cell in order to make computations. So I'm just writing down which tubular neighborhood we actually use. And so the tubular neighborhood that you use is this translate of big cell by this V dot. And uh, so this one, uh, I mean, you can actually compute that uh, this is actually going to be, I mean, it requires a little bit of a computation, but you can check that this is, uh, so I'll write a slightly complicated definition and then uh, explain what that is so beta should be a negative root such that w inverse takes it to positive and uh, you take this i mean affine lines corresponding to this uh, beta this u beta these are the root groups times u u w inverse w t u so it looks something like this. It's a bit weird, but this actually set what I've written in my previous notation. It's just a minus of phi v inverse. And uh, so this is u beta times b w b. And this is a kind of open neighborhood of b w b. And uh, this is an open neighborhood depending only on w. And uh, that is what we use because V was kind of dependent on W. But uh, what I want to point out is that when you write down the orientation for the normal bundle, it's basically, this is what is going to matter. So the identification given by pinning with uh, for, of this space with the affine space is what is going to matter. So basically what matters is basically this reduced expression for V. Uh, now, uh, so there is another uh, technicality. The technicality is that actually you don't need all pinnings. Basically, if two pinnings differ by a square, then they will induce the same map. This is something that can be checked. And uh, so basically, one only needs what is called a weak pinning, which is actually uh, an equivalence class up to the square action. And uh, now, uh, the point here is that now here I had this expression for the cellular complex of G. So of course this reduced expression over here goes into this kind of thing, but this is completely independent. So you're actually allowed to choose a different lift W dot and we will actually make use of this. And it's actually important for the proof. I mean, it's important in the sense that it helps the proof. It makes the proof much easier. So, uh, Basically, so, I mean, here, this W dot does not have to be the same W dot, which is used for uh, this uh, thing, uh, for the orientation of the normal bundle. So, basically, choose a horizontal expression, so which we call a horizontal expression. So, which is, which can be another reduced expression. W tilde of W of each W in W. So then, now I'll write down this. So then after you make this thing, so now you can write CI cell of G as uh, the direct sum over words of length L minus I of KI min of it. Tensor. So this is going to be just the so B is uh, T times 
you. So you can actually forget all the affine spaces inside me and you can just take W tilde T. Okay, and uh, this I can, I mean, I can use a different W tilde and ultimately I will actually be making computations inside this guy. So this sum over whatever of uh, of this guy. So this is something which is simple and that we understand. And uh, but in making this isomorphism, you have to keep track of multiplication by this W tilde. And if you have a simpler W tilde to work with, your life becomes much easier. So uh, yeah. So that's just one point which is kind of looks harmless but it's important okay so now what do we what do we need to understand to compute uh, so our aim is to compute uh, this h1 cellular of g and uh, so what we need we need to understand two things uh, so of course the first thing is uh, the differentials in G, but before that, what we want is structure of uh, Z, A, and T. And that is also, there is a small tricky, tricky point there, which actually was actually very confusing for us in the beginning. And uh, that's why we kept on getting a wrong answer. And then we realized that uh, what was missing and then everything fell into place. And then the second thing that we need to understand differentials in this uh, cellular chain complex. Okay, so before I move ahead, any questions? So, okay, so I'll say something about the structure of Z given. So, of course, one has to choose an isomorphism, choose an identification of uh, this torus as product of GMs. So, choose an isomorphism. Uh, so, I am actually, I mean, of course, I am kind of pretend, although my group is simply connected, I am pretending that it is not simply connected and then just writing down uh, computations. But, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, you, you know what I mean. So, I am going to write uh, alpha i check. So since my group is simply connected, the core roots will actually give me an isomorphism with uh, between the product of GM and T. In general, it will not be, but you can choose some other one and then still make this computer. I mean, you can use this, what I'm describing, one can, this can be used to even discuss uh, non-simply connected groups, but the computations are much harder. So basically, uh, so G, uh, simply connected in this case these are simple core roots okay so now the point to keep in mind is that so any uh, so let f be a field extension of k and uh, basically we will be making computations over all field extensions over k i will not keep on writing it it's uh, you just assume it's understood that the computation is taking place in some field extension so if you have a unit then this gives you a class in k1 milnovit of f but if you see the notation actually used in fabian morel's book is actually like this but I don't want to use that notation because of the confusion with the following thing that I'm going to write. I want to use this square bracket notation. So basically for any, so the sheaf that we have, we have to understand is this free strictly even invariant sheaf on T. So basically any T in T, so by this I mean T, F points of T, this, corresp this corresponds to an element of z a1 of t but uh, so when t is gm this is not the same as the symbol corresponding to u because recall that z a1 of gm is the direct sum of z and k1 milnovit and uh, so basically i mean and this t is actually pointed at one 
so so this t is pointed at one which is basically one 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 in each of the gm so uh, i mean the correct notation is to have is to set this square bracket t as this uh, so round bracket t as square bracket t minus square bracket one so this square bracket t is the one which corresponds to this t and this one corresponds to one inside the t and their difference is the reduced t and uh, so that's what i mean by this u so given any u in f star the bracket u is actually square bracket u minus square bracket one okay so once you have this so uh, okay so now uh, this alpha i check so this one copy of this gm inside t so this induces a map from so it is z a1 gm but now it's the reduced gm inside z, z a1 t and uh, so this guy is actually k1 in a bit and uh, so given any symbol u i mean given any unit u it gives a symbol which i am going to denote by u sub i and uh, the definition of this is that this is the uh, this is the round bracket symbol of the image of u inside the torus and this by the convention that i took actually means square bracket u minus square bracket 1 okay so this is a bit tricky but this is something that one has to keep in mind for uh, for the calculation okay is this uh, uh, okay is this tricky point clear yes, then i will just explain what is the ring structure on on z a1 t okay so the ring ring structure on z a1 t it's uh, it's uh, yeah i mean it's not tricky but uh, i mean it's a bit uh, i mean one has to be careful so it's a commutative ring so basically if you take u in ith stage and v in jth place then uh, this is just going to be i mean this commutes but if you are if your u and v are in the same place in the same component then eta will come into picture then you have to keep in mind that this is actually eta u v i okay so is this point uh, clear so this is this is i mean uh, yeah so this is something that one has to keep in mind while doing computations and uh, so basically the structure of so of course as, as i wrote in note over here this product gives you an isomorphism like this uh, and uh, so basically this induces an isomorphism uh, between uh, the tensor products of z a1 but now with square bracket gms with z a1 t and if you open this all up because each uh, each of these terms so each of these terms is actually z derives some uh, k1 min of it and this tensor product is in the strictly a1 it's the a1 tensor product strictly a1 invariant sheets so this one actually is the direct sum of z and then direct sum over uh, all this s tuples i mean with s varying of uh, numbers between 1 and r of k s min of it okay and this isomorphism is actually quite easy to describe it is actually given by i mean for if you are given a bunch of units i mean to define a map from k s min of it you only have to define it on an s tuple of units so if you are given units like this then it goes to u1 i1 and the product of up to u s i s so it's a bit tricky but uh, i mean this is something that one has to keep in mind so uh, okay so after this i will go to the differential so i mean is this uh, fine 
I ask you a question. I'm thinking oh. I'm a little bit lost. I mean, that this decomposition corresponds to the decomposition of the uh, T into sum of. I yes, mean, if you so take uh, two points yeah, so teams, cross thing. them, then you have one thing, another thing, and smash product. Yes, yes. So this T is broken down as this product of GMs. Right, and that induces this one. Yeah, and I mean, uh, if you look at this uh, direct sum decomposition, which you wrote in the bottom, this corresponds to the, to the decomposition, which is... This one? Yeah, yeah I mean, it, this, as one stable, there is a, a decomposition. If you take a pointed scheme, another one, you take the cross product, then this is the same as one scheme plus another scheme plus... Yes, plus yes, product. exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Okay, yeah. So this is a decomposition into direct sum of several yeah. many smashes. Yes, yes. Okay, thanks. Exactly. So, uh, yeah. This is exactly that one. Uh, yeah. And, uh, I mean, you know, at some point, uh, I think... Uh, Powell had asked me uh, some time back that, uh, I mean, uh, about this uh, cellular complex being, if it is uh, if, if it is dependent on the uh, filtration. And I said, not because they are projective objects. That actually kind of follows from this because, uh, I mean, projective means direct summons of free objects. And uh, this kind of says that these Ki Milner widths, these are direct summons of free objects. And uh, that's why this is a complex of projective objects, and which is why you can actually show that. Uh, I mean, you, you can use it to show that uh, it's kind of functorial. Anyway, I was just making a comment. Okay, now, uh, okay, so now we want to go towards the differential, uh, but let me explain which uh, differentials do we need. So basically, we are only trying to compute. Uh, so, okay, so I'll write it. So this C star cell of G, this, I mean, G has a T action on both left and right. So this is a complex of right and left Z A1 T modules. And uh, so the main point is that, so, okay, uh, we are interested in this last part. So C2 cell of G, C1 cell of G, and uh, then Z. So C0 cell of, I mean, it's Z, but I should be careful. So this part of the complex, I want, I'm interested in homology at uh, this point. And uh, so this guy over here is just, uh, Yeah, it's just Z A1 of W0 tilde T in my notation. So, uh, yeah, so what we are interested in is, uh, so I, I mean, I, I'll use the standard uh, homology notation. So, uh, Z1 means the kernel of delta 1, uh, del 1. And uh, so we are actually interested in computing this. Uh, first cellular homology, so which is the quotient of this map. Okay, but the key point here is that uh, so when G is simply connected, this is actually A1 connected, and uh, that can be used to show that this uh, T action on homology is trivial on all homology. So this H1 cellular of G is also the quotient of quotient of this by T. And this is actually going to be a great help.
because i mean we have determined actually all the differentials even in at the level of g but uh, i mean if you take a look at the paper i mean they are actually the it was quite terrible i mean it was a lot of hard work so uh, perhaps before i uh, before i start computing the differential explicitly i mean i try to because it's going to get quite nasty but by the way uh, alexey can you tell me how much time do i have maybe like half an hour or so is okay yeah yeah at least half an hour might be 40 minutes okay 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 so uh, before i go ahead let me just give you an example of rank 1 groups i mean just uh, to give you a feel of what happens because basically the rank 1 case is going to nicely embed inside various i mean you, you have to just fit it in at right places to get the higher uh, degree cases so let us just uh, assume that uh, so g semi simple of rank 1 you actually don't need to assume simply connected over here but it's okay i mean so split semi simple uh, of like rank 1 not uh, yeah if you take this quotient model uh, z1 of c does it correspond yeah. to some cell complex for some other variety uh so basically you would hope that it would be the cell complex of g mod b or yeah. which is also g mod t that would be your hope but uh, i mean uh, for in low degrees that is kind of okay but not always so basically if you take the cellular uh, chain complex of g all of it and you take quotient by this uh, t action you will actually get the it is homotopic to the cellular complex of g mod t mm -hmm. but for homology that will not be true for homology you will have to write down a spectral sequence uh, i hope that uh, makes sense <laughs> yeah 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 makes so uh, basically it will be the i mean um, it's and the, and the spectral uh, sequence doesn't degenerate right yeah it doesn't degenerate and in fact uh, one of the proofs that we have of this is using this spectral sequence but uh, i mean we excluded it because here we could do it kind of by first principles and that is more elementary and spectral okay. sequence stuff was actually using a lot of other machinery like it was using some work of demazur and so on and so forth i mean this proof that we have actually basically uses only that group theory that was available to mazur so yeah, maybe that's why it was a bit of a one chose this one anyway so of course when rank of g is 1 its while group is z mod 2 it's generated by just one reflection and uh, so basically the cellular uh, chain complex of g is going to have this form so it's going to be so this is the k1 milner wick term but i am actually writing it c a m g m to uh, where this s is the uh, yeah so where uh, this the while group is generated by s and uh, this corresponds to the uh, the root uh, alpha the yeah so uh, the way this is uh, described is actually i mean one can calculate that this is actually so you can put this inside z a1 of gm cross t so this appears as a direct summand now so this gm to t there is this map uh, alpha check by the co root times the identity of t you can go to z a1 of t cross t now you can use the product of t to go into z a1 of t and then you can go here this is isomorphic okay and uh, so basically let me just point out what happens when uh, so so when g is sl2 so this alpha check from gm so now i am writing t t is also gm but i want to just not confuse that's why right. this is actually the identity map and uh, so in that case basically everything is determined by the product inside z a1 of t z a1 of t 
uh, I mean Z A one T cross T to Z A one T. So that determines everything, and that formula is actually quite well known. So uh, basically, that formula one can check is uh, so. I mean, right now, uh, so let me just say that this one. So this group over here. So this is Z direct sum. Oh, sorry. So this one over here is just K one min of it. and this one is z direct sum k1 min of it so when you take their a1 tensor product it's going to be uh, this is just going to be uh, k2 min of it direct sum k1 min of it i switched the order but uh, yeah and uh, the last term is going to be k1 min of it direct sum z and so now you can write this as a matrix and the matrix is actually given by the uh, given by analyzing what mu is so the mu this product from k2 minor bit to uh, uh, k2 minor bit uh, uh, i mean from left to right is basically the direct sum of eta and g eta and identity and uh, so identity of k1 minor bit and eta from k2 minor bit to k1 minor bit and so from that you can conclude that this is this the answer is actually this and then you can see that everything in k1 minor bit is hit so basically uh, h0 set of sl2 is c and uh, h1 cell of sl2 so this is basically the kernel of this map but then k2 sitting inside k2 direct sum k1 is the answer basically this is the copy of k2 minor bit this the kernel is also isomorphic to k2 uh, that is kind of easy to check uh secondly if uh, uh g is pgl2 then alpha check is the square map and uh, so the so the square map actually induces the induces the map multiplication by h in the in the in minor bit cake theory so h as the element of gw so c stel of pgl2 so it's the same formula but each entry in the matrix is multiplied by h so it will be eta h h 0 0 but we all know that eta h is actually zero that's the defining relation in minor bit theory so it's this and uh, so then h0 of pgl2 so this is going to be uh, so uh, i mean it's going to be k1 minor bit modulo h direct sum z but this is just i direct sum z and you can just check that this is again now uh, this is k0 minor bit this can be checked and uh, this h1 is uh, will be the kernel of this map so k2 minor bit is definitely there it all its maps are zero and uh, but what remains is this h torsion in k1 minor bit so what i oops, so what i want to point out is that pgl2 is not a1 connected it's uh, pi 0 a1 is actually uh, gm mod 2 or another way of writing it is k1 mod 2 and uh, uh, yeah so the free strictly a1 invariant sheaf on pi 0 a1 is actually h0 a1 and uh, actually h1 cell does not agree with h1 a1 so uh, i mean uh, h1a1 lies in an exact sequence of this form of uh, this form so using the fact that sl2 is the simply connected cover you can check that so pi1 of pgl2 right uh, uh, lies in the form like this in an exact sequence like this so it's an extension of mu2 by uh, k2 minor bit but that is not the same as what you have here what you have here is slightly bigger 
Okay, so uh, I mean they don't agree. That's all. Okay, so now I will move to uh, I will move to computations. So where uh, I have to explain that. So this is what we are. So this is what we are going to use to compute uh, the first uh, homology of G. So we got this from. I mean this is what we wanted to do, but uh, we have reduced it to this one. So of course I will not have a lot of time to give details, but I will just give you some key aspects of the computation which are uh, kind of important and uh, then i will indicate uh, if time is there I, I will indicate what to do for g mod p which is actually work in progress being written up uh, so uh, okay so this was about kind of structure of z and t and then uh, i mean how does the differential look like so now we want to discuss differentials in CFG. Uh, so okay, uh, yeah. So before I start with the actual description, so we are going to only require we we require it in only low degrees. So basically, uh, our world of largest length is W zero. Then the words of length one uh, less are of the form W zero S I, and then length two less or w0 si sj uh, but before i st start with that let me just talk about a little bit of a general uh, thing or maybe maybe i will skip this i will because uh, i will okay so fix a uh, so fix the uh, so fix a reduced expression So W zero as uh, so it's of length L. So I'll write sigma L to sigma one, and these all these sigma i's are in this class of simple groups. So I thought the I I think the rank was R. Okay. Anyway, so actually one problem with this paper was that we actually ran out of symbols. We actually ran out of symbols. So, can see if you read the paper so i mean you can see why so because these are the simple roots you don't want to use the same for this, uh, this thing so so anyway so uh, right uh, so fix this one and then uh, for of course each of uh, these simple roots we have fixed a lift s si dot right in the beginning uh, so set wi to be W zero SI, and this can be obtained from this by removing a unique uh, root for a unique lambda i inside this one to L. Okay, so you can knock off one of these, and so then write. Uh, W zero as W i uh, double prime sigma lambda i W i prime. Okay, uh, but anyway, uh, I think uh, anyway before going ahead, let let me just ask. Uh, I mean, probably this is too much notation, but please up to this everything. I mean, can do you have any questions till before the differentials? I mean about these computations for SL2, PGL2, and maybe about CA1T. When I mean, you otherwise feel free to ask. You can interrupt and ask, it's not a problem. Okay, so basically you want to write this W0 into this form. And uh, now, as I said, you can. Uh, I mean, there are two ways of writing. I mean, earlier. For normal reduced expressions, I was taking a for every word I was taking a reduced expression, fixing the lifts. That will not agree with, uh, I'm mean, not necessarily agree with this thing. So for the horizontal expressions, I am going to set W i tilde to be. So you take this W i prime and take its dot, which means you take the fixed reduced expression and then take the dots. 
and then take wi dot okay so this is the choice that i am making inside the normalizer <laughs> okay so now uh, i will uh, give the formula for this uh, delta one uh, which is the del one or whatever so the differential so this del one cell of g so this is a z a one t module homomorphism given by uh, so the following formula write it in blue so of course this c1 cell of g consists of a uh, direct sum of uh, several things so i am only going to uh, explain what delta is on this each of the summands so each summand has this form okay and uh, on the right the c0 guy is just z a1 of w0 tilde t so where w0 tilde t is by definition w0 dot t you don't need to make any different choice okay so so this one i mean to give this map uh, you only have to define it on a unit and so i mean this is a bit of abuse of notation and it's a, it's going to be a z a1 t module homomorphism so you only have to define it on this uh, wi tilde dot one okay where one is the one of t and of course i'm working over a uh, field extension and so on and i'm not writing about that and of course i mean sections over fields will determine everything for the sheaf so that all is understood so where do you send it so you send it to uh, this element and here this square bracket notation is actually very very important so this actually this is not the this 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 is the round bracket one this is not this is in the reduced part of this and not in this whole it it does not touch the z okay so this of course to determine this formula is not completely obvious uh, so i gave all this notation over here and uh, because this actually formula uh, i mean proof, proof of this actually uses the following tricky identity but it's easy to prove once you know what it what you have to prove so it actually you need to use at some point in the proof that if you take this wi tilde uh, prime which is this part over here and if you take its inverse and if you apply it on the root corresponding to sigma lambda i so this is the root corresponding to sigma lambda i uh, this actually is equal to the coroot so this is uh, yeah so this is actually the coroot corresponding to si so it's a bit tricky but this is actually required to do this i will not go through the uh, detailed computations but uh, i will kind of tell, tell you where it comes from i mean just to give you a vague idea so the idea is that i mean this should be seen as uh, formed of this so i don't know how to explain this actually but uh, i mean in less words but well okay i, I think I, I i would rather not write anything and just explain it in words so the idea is that you see this uh, sigma lambda i over this is going to be removed and uh, when you remove this and do some calculations only this part is going to come into picture because you have to shift something on the other side using the t module structure z z z z a1 t module structure 
which is why only this part is going to matter because you know how how the differential looks like on rank one uh, groups so that is the expression going to be for this one when you remove this thing but uh, you are going to have to take this wi prime on the other side in order to write down the differential and which is why only that one features here and then this equality is going to play a role okay so that's uh, that's all i can say i think to kind of give an idea where the crux is but uh, uh, i mean you can then you can do this okay any questions up to now because then i will go to the next uh, technical part so okay so the next technical part is to so again let let me go up and recall that this is what we want to compute so we want to compute the kernel so once we know the first differential we have to compute its kernel but uh, it's much easier to compute the kernel when you remove all the t's so so that's what we do so the key lemma so let me write it over here is that oops it's too light key lemma over here is that so this uh, so you can take uh, this kernel this has the following precise form so you take the direct sum of k2 minor bit over i from 1 to r so these are just all possible values of i and then you take the sum of k2 minors from r, and this is over pairs i less than j and this actually gives you a homomorphism uh, isomorphism onto this z1 cell of g quotient by the t action okay so this is a it's a little complicated to de define this thing but i will just try to do it anyway so of course to give a map from k2 minor bit to something you have to give it on two symbols a pair of symbols and that map is uh, i mean we write uh, i of u v and this has a complicated formula which i'm going to write but uh, i mean anyway it's just for the record and i mean anyway i will be giving the notes afterwards so that you can keep the record but one doesn't have to remember the formula so this is this complicated element so Uh, I, I'll, I'll write first and then I'll explain. Okay, theta u v. See, I mean, the point is that I'm going modulo the t action. So basically, when I later compute, all these kind of things are going to die because they lie completely inside t, and I'm killing t over here. So uh, I mean, these things don't matter, but I'm just. writing this to give you a formula at the level of uh, i mean to i mean this also helps you give a formula at the level of g without going to the portion and basically only some part the z part that is over here is going to survive and that's how the computation will work but anyway i mean just to for the sake of completeness let me give you the other formula as well so for this these kind of factors for minor k theory uh so uh, anyway so i write this delta i j u v of course i can understand if you are lost but uh, i'll just write down the formula then because later i will make use of some of them so it's, it's kind of symmetric okay so that's how it uh, i mean looks like so you have to determine the kernel and once you determine the kernel then now you have to determine the second differential so let me just go up again and for a second so the computation yeah for sl2 what can you show again the computation for sl2 I yeah, mean, I just sure. want to see this k two mu nor bit and k mu two mu nor. Here. Uh, 
I got a little bit lost. I mean, uh huh. What are the summons that you stated just? Ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So ago? actually, I actually it, it is better to look at this one. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, I think probably I should explain what differential this is, right? See, the idea was that so in K2, here there was nothing because I mean W0 SI is just nothing because it's of order 2. W0 is just 1 S and S times S is identity. Yeah. So there was nothing over here in uh, it one there was just s over here here and uh, so basically what is happening is that this is the uh, yeah so this is the this is the summand corresponding to uh, w0 si and this is of course corresponding there's only one over here so I'm just uh, yeah writing this one, and uh, so I mean what is happening is that uh, I mean here there are mixed terms of course. I mean how to explain? So this is in the kind of jth factor, and this is in the ith factor. I mean the kernel is a little complicated to de determine, but one can determine it. So anyway, I think the formula doesn't really matter. One doesn't have to follow this at this point. But uh, okay, uh, so there is just one. Uh, okay, so I think uh, there is not much time anyway. But I will uh, say something about. Uh, okay, so I will just say something about. Uh, I will just say something about uh, this degree two differential. So there is also a, quite a bit of complication over here to determine it explicitly. So the reason is that, okay, so now we started with a fixed expression like this. And uh, then we fixed an expression of this guy, which was this removing this lambda i. And now we are interested in w i j. So I write it in this funny way because I mean, it depends upon whether uh, SI and SJ are going to be adjacent in the Dinkin diagram or not. So if they are not, if they are far away, then SI, SJ is SJ, SI, then there is no, there are no two WIJs. Uh, if they are neighbors, then there are two different ones. So this one is going to be, uh, so you have knocked out this lambda I, you will have to knock out some mu J. Okay, so for a unique mu j in this 1 to l minus lambda i. Now there are actually, I have written mu j after lambda i, but there are actually two cases. Whether lambda i greater than mu j or lambda i less than mu j. But there is a trick which allows us to, uh, so in, if you are in this case, so you can always reduce to this uh, lambda i greater than mu j case by using the following trick. So what you do is that, because you are only dealing with uh, focusing on two roots, so basically this w i j, so this w0 s i s j, the differentials from that will only go to w0 s i and w0 s j, nothing else will be hit in the cellular complex. So uh, to do this, the trick that you use is that uh, you can look at the subgroup of the while group generated by these two SI and SJ. And uh, you can always factor uh, this W0 as uh, in the form U0, V0, where V0 is the longest word in this WIJ. And in this case, because if you are working with uh, you have two roots, then you can always arrange uh, the 
expressions such that they are always of the form lambda greater than mu j. What will happen is that there will be a unit that will come into picture because you will have to compare two expressions, but that unit doesn't really matter. Uh, I mean, anyway, so this is just a complication and then you can actually determine the differential. We have actually quite painstakingly determined it in our uh, paper, but I will not go into technicalities. I will only write down the following key proposition. Which actually, uh, so anyway, since I, I let me finish quickly. So I, what I was I was showing was this highlighted thing that we are interested in determining this map, and then we have to determine the co-kernel, which is the this one. So this map can be determined as follows. So I'll, I'll just maybe I'll cut paste. here okay so <coughs> yeah so this map uh, yeah is is given by the following so of course uh, okay, so uh, so this uh, term on the left consists of terms of this form. So each term inside here will be K2 Milnovit. So inside C2 cell of G, each term will look like uh, some element of this form. And uh, then this tensored with uh, so this T is going to cancel, but this uh, I mean this T is going to cancel with this T, but then you have to keep track of twist by this. But uh, on this on this factor, an element is going to look like some UV tensor uh, some WIJ dot one. And now it's image inside the right hand side. So the right hand side, this kernel is determined over here as some K2 Milner widths and K2 Milners. So in that analogy, so now I don't have much time. So I'm going to just write down the formula. So it is given by delta ij bar of vu. So delta ij was defined above and its image uh, by bar, I mean, quotient modulo t. So this is true if alpha i and alpha j are not adjacent in the Dinkin diagram. And otherwise, so I think I should move this a bit to the left. So this is true if alpha i and alpha j are not adjacent. And if they are adjacent, then uh, the formula is slightly different. So it is delta j i bar. I mean, whatever the formula is, it doesn't. It's not going to probably matter right now. But uh, there is this extra term where uh, n, where n j i is the entry in the Carta matrix. So it's the minus of alpha j alpha i j. So, uh, so this is the kind of complicated formula. And uh, if you actually uh, calculate this, it's only going to be, it's, it's only going to involve uh, etas or zeros. Because all the t you are going to forget and you're ultimately going to have only, I mean, depending upon whether this n j i is even or odd, it's uh, going to be uh, some even multiple of multiple of h eta by h even in case that is even which is going to be zero or in the odd case it's going to be eta and now using this you can actually compute the uh, you can actually compute the uh, the co-kernel of this map you can actually compute the co-kernel of this map 
and this is actually also done in indirectly so you note that these are all uh, sheaves are strictly even invariant sheaves so what you do is that you dualize this you take an arbitrary strictly even invariant sheaf m map these to that and then compute the kernel of that home and then you indirectly show that it is the home of uh, k2 milner or k2 milner bit into m and that's how you finish the computation Okay, so I was actually also going to give you some idea about G mod B and the whole cellular complex, but I think uh, it's already a lot of time, so I will not start in the technicality unless, uh, I mean, in the discussions, if somebody wants to ask, uh, I can explain. But uh, thank you very much for your attention through this quite technical topic.